Hey everyone, it's Justine and welcome to day 7 of the 12 Days of Christmas 2017. Today I'm going to be playing with some lawn fawn stamps as well as creating a watercolor background wash that is super easy and simple to do. Since I bought these koi watercolors, I kind of can't stop watercoloring. They're absolutely awesome. I love the way that the quality and I love how smooth they are. And I'm actually liking them a lot more than my Gansu Tambi ones for whatever reason. Maybe it's just the color variety that I like so much. So I'm going to start off by I'm actually wetting the brush, not the color. And I'm just putting a watercolor wash over top of my background. And it looks a little streaky, but it's just this first coat, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. And I'm just using a purple color. I'm going in and I am just drying that with my heat tool here. I find the heat tool really good for drying um, backgrounds and not so much embossing. Because it creates a less concentrated heat and it dries the whole surface area quickly. So now I'm going in with some blue and going back in with the purple to create a blend in order to blend these two colors together and going in once again with my heat tool. I want to create a smooth transition between all of the colors. Then I'm going to go in with a little bit of a darker blue at the top and then I'm going to go in with that lighter blue to blend it back in and then again with the purple to blend those colors. Once I'm all finished I'm just going to take off the washi tape but you could leave it since I decided to add an extra step. I cut this panel at six and four and three quarters so I could cut it down in the end anyway. And I'm gonna go in with my starry colors. This is a Gansey Tambi color. And I'm going in with the white gold. I absolutely love their six pack of gold colors. They create such a nice shine on top of watercolor. So I'm just gonna set that off to dry and I will fold up my card base. It measures 11 by four and a quarter and it's folded in the middle at five and a half inches. And I cut down my watercolor piece using a stitched rectangle die from Lawn Fawn. So it actually creates a pretty big white border there at the bottom. And I'm gonna set that off to the side and I'm gonna start stamping the rest of my scene. So I'm going to stamp the Here We Go A Waddling stamp set from Lawn Fawn. And I love this little group of penguin choir. And I am going to stamp that using some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink, which is Copic marker friendly. I set down the Copic markers majority of the time next to what I was coloring so you'll know exactly what it is and I will have the full list of Copic colors over on my blog if you're interested in copying this design. So I'm just stamping it down here and I actually didn't like the way that it stamped. I accidentally moved my block a little bit and I got a little bit of a shadow so I'm just going to stamp it a second time and I'm going to go ahead and stamp the lantern as well next to it because I'm going to be die cutting these later so it doesn't really matter where I place these on my cardstock. Alright so now starts the Copic coloring. I'm going in with my darkest, medium and light colors and I am actually going to be using the N series of gray markers so N4, 6 and 8 to create the, the penguins and it's really important that you don't use all black when you're trying to color with Copics because it will wash out the actual stamp line and you won't be able to see any of the detail. It just generally doesn't look very nice. So go ahead and go in with several shades of gray and you'll be happy with the results I'm sure. I actually decided to go in and make these quite a bit darker than I had planned. I just ended up using the N6 and N8 to cover the background and that ended up being really nice. And I went ahead and added some lines this time with my Copic markers as well. And I tried to make it coordinate with the background. So I used purple and blue so that it would coordinate with the watercolors. I thought that using red and green would kind of clash if I had done them in this color. So I'm really satisfied in the end with all the little details that I did. And I went in with some dark blue color there and to color the beaks in orange. Now that those are all finished, I'm just going to go ahead and take my coordinating dies, place them onto my sheet of paper, and I'll die cut those off screen. I love coordinating dies. Anything I don't have to fussy cut, I'm happy with. So I'm going to set these here kind of off to the side a little bit and I'm just going to go ahead and cut out a snowbank for them to be standing on. So I grabbed a scrap sheet of paper and the Lawn Fawn stitched border die and I went ahead and I die cut that and then I also needed to die cut it again using the stitched rectangle die so it would be the same actual size as my background. So I went ahead and I glued the sides and the bottom of this so that the top was open so I could slip things inside. You could also just simply glue the snowbank on at the very end and glue everything else down first, but whatever works for you. 
going to go ahead and slip the penguins here into the snowbank. I think they absolutely look so cool standing behind there. And then I'm going to slip the lantern behind them as well before it dries. This is why I kind of like to use liquid glue versus a tape runner because I have time to place things or lift things up if I need to. Overall, I'm super satisfied with the way that it turned out and I'm going to have to find a place now for the sentiment up in the night sky. This is why I didn't add stars originally to my project because I needed to add the sentiment first. And then in the end, I think it worked out well using some music notes as snow. So the last step was to make sure the watercolor panel is completely dry, so I went and tested that. And then I used my embossing bag there, my embossing buddy, to make sure that nothing's going to stick to the background where I don't want it to stick. I arranged my sentiment here as well as a couple of music notes and I picked all of those up using a block. I'm going to stamp them in some Versamark ink and then I'm going to cover them with some super fine white embossing powder from Ranger. Then I'm just going to simply heat those up using my embossing heater or my heat tool. And this one's a little bit different. This one's different than the one I used for the watercolor because this creates a very concentrated heat so it doesn't warp the paper very much when you're heating it up. So that's the end of today's card tutorial. Look at that shine. I love how it turned out. If you're interested in more details, you can head over to my blog. I have the link below in the video description. And you can go ahead and check out the giveaway that I have for Lawn Fawn as well. So you can go ahead and leave a comment here on the video for a chance to win a $25 gift certificate to Lawn Fawn. And I have additional ways to win over on my blog. You can go ahead here and click to go to my Christmas card playlist if you've missed out on any of the videos so far, or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I will see you tomorrow for day 8.